It's the October 25th, 2023. I'm going to be your host tonight, Dana Durnford. I hope you're doing well. The nuclear industry doesn't take a day off, I guess. That's how evil works. I, unfortunately, am not evil, so... I still have to try to work every day to keep up with the world's evilest industry. An industry of terrorists. That's the only way to describe nuclear. And the story's crazy. It's just, you can't even have a normal conversation anymore. This is the Western media, Canada, United States, in particular, British is there too. Australia, it's, um, ABC Cecilia Vega is Australia. BBC uh, Rupert Winfield Hayes is United Kingdom. So I'm not 100% correct when I say Western media, am I? If Fukushima polluting the entire Pacific Ocean, we're talking about how people should be dressed, New York Times. Investigation chairman, one Fukushima may destroy the entire country. Collapse of a whole country is possible. And that's what's happened. It's ju it just, it's a slow die. It's not that slow, but it's a very painful on top of that. The species go first, and that's what we're seeing. And so the official story is nothing got out of the buildings, just because you, you can't even cover the news, you gotta, you gotta come out and explain this first. Because if the average person, or more than the average person, 99% of the people thinks the reactor looks like that. The reactor is actually gone. Why is the world's media pretending they're in a building that don't even exist? Because it's an extinction event, stupid. Not just kidding, but I thought it'd be kind of funny. Why else would you do it, see? Divide 1.32 grams by 0 0.06 and you get 22. So if you take 122 of 1 1.3 grams, that's what's going to get released starting this year, each yearly cycle. And nothing got out of that. I know what you're saying now, oh, Dana. That's real bad, Dana. Yeah, but the, but the government and the universities and the medias the nuclear industry is saying that that never happened. So where do you go from there? In fact, we had a poll about it. Should it be criminal for International Atomic Energy Agency to claim Fukushima never released anything? Only 2.2 grams of tritium, of all things. And the tritium single wouldn't even show up because it's going to be dominated by the curium single and the plutonium and the uranium. And, and the list is very, very long. There's lots of terrorists out there trying to lead you away from reality. I'm trying to get you in a position where you can protect yourself, which is a difficult task, unfortunately. Now, last night we were covering all kinds of studies on Fukushima, and a lot of it's propaganda, right? But we're covering lots of studies let me see if we can look a little bit closer. Covering all these studies. Uh, oh, God, I screwed that up today. Ninety strontium Pacific activity of teeth of the abandoned cattle after Fukushima accident. Teeth as an indicator of environmental pollution. Look at all the people in that study. So look at all the people. They're, they're, they're going to pay mortgages. They're going to pay car payments, house payments. Um, they got to take their children to all kinds of activities, music lessons, karate, blah, 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 blah. And 99% of the academics' job is to promote nuclear, not denigrate it. Radi radio cesium, every time I heard of the, the English cesium, cesium version, that's a known propaganda. To, uh, it's almost 100 percent propaganda. That's what the British. I, I, I really, the British are insane. That's, if you're trying to describe the British nuclear industry, the first word you're going to use are insane. The next word is a holes. 
and the next one is gonna be scumbags. Insane a-hole scumbags. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. I, I like it. It got rhythm. Like in Fukushima, they picked up 30 million. Some say 60 million, but 30 million we know for sure. It was 150,000 sites, 2017 or something. 2019 they had it to 105,000 sites, but they never stopped growing food, and they're so insane. That's the only way to the terrorists. These are terrorists. You're growing food right alongside of one ton bags of radiation. If that's not terrorism, what the frig is? Analysts of the accident Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Station Unit 3. Unit 3. Unit 3 was the mixed oxide fuel. Just hang on. I seem to smurfed up a little tiny bit. We'll be back on track in a second here. Back on track. So unit three, you can see over there, that's right after the accidents. It's leveled, it's leveled. This was a 190 foot building. There's only four stories to the 190 foot buildings. And um, the reactors at the very top of the, the buildings, the very, very, very top. And so are the fuel pools. The fuel pools have no containment, so they're, they're, they're terrorists too. They're always hemorrhaging radiation into an environment. That's been going on for 80 years. They're splitting atoms, the same as you would for a million homes when it was in a containment. Now it's not in the containment and it's surrounded by farms. And so this is why they do stuff like this is because they're so used to just being terrorists. And so when you look at the building over there, it's pretty clear the reactor core, which is at the top of the buildings, and the two fuel pools are not there. They're not there. In fact, that building, the mixed oxide fuel, was reclaimed uranium plutonium, which is st literally the stupidest thing you can do because you have no way of dealing with the fuel once it comes out of the the reactor because it's already been through a chain reaction once now it's gone through again and uh, the emissions from the fuel pools from the mixed oxide fuels are hideous it's unbelievably hideous and they're very very uh, careful about hiding that documentation and way that so this there's a reactor you can't see it because my big head is in the way hang on so you see the reactor where my head is to? Well, you know, that's 700 foot right here for the stacks. These stacks are venting into the farmland from the fuel pool, by the way. And there's f over 400 plants, nuclear plants worldwide, that are doing that. It's despicable. Like, you, can't, you cannot let this continue. You've got to stop this disgusting industry. It's going to wipe out everything. It already is. It's time to fight back. You got no choice. It's in your, it's in your face, but you can't see it or hear it or smell it or feel it or taste it, but you can identify it. And so the fuel pool, the reactor cores were jacked out of the building. They put this contraption that doesn't physically touch the stump that remains of reactor three. So it looked like this. They they used as many homeless as they can get their hands on, but apparently they've ran out of homeless now. No nuclear scientist is going anywhere near this thing. That's the stump of reactor three. So they built this contraption over it that doesn't physically touch it. And then pretended that they're in the fuel pools that don't actually exist. They've done the same thing for reactor four. And Arnie Gunnison, of course, used to, for the Americans, have 71 of those reactors. Arnie Gunnison is promoting building behind him. I put that picture there, but just, he showed that picture himself, but he won't show you that one. And listen to what he says. Now, I built, the division I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors exactly like Fukushima. And Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watched our website 
on the very first week of the accident, I was saying that if Unit 4 were to catch fire, you'd have to evacuate Tokyo. And look at him. He's trying not to bite his tongue off because he told such a big lie. Unit 4 is gone. And his charming little monster wife, Maggot Gunnarsson, It was a dark night and we were in an alley and you seen that coming at you. You turn around and run away. Let's tell the truth. Be honest. Be, be honest. Don't lie. <clears throat> Hang on. Let me zoom in on it. I want you to see his face. Why did he put her face in there? She was a spokesperson for the nuclear industry for 20 years. And she married the Graveling, that is Ernie Gunnarsson. Two monsters living under the one roof. How is that going to work out? So listen to what Ernie's... Well, I can move Ernie in the picture, I suppose. I want you to concentrate on her bizarre response. Unit 4 it has always been my biggest concern. If you watch... Look at it. It's just like a lizard, eh? Just like a lizard. Wow, I didn't know she could blink. I thought that was only Ernie could do that. Look at her. What's she even doing there? Ernie made the assemblies for the fuel pool. <clears throat> Let's get back on track here. I despised them for doing that. They're pretending to react. Now, Ernie made, uh, I'm sorry, the fuel racks for the assemblies for the fuel pools, so he knows they're not, they're not there. How come he's not in jail? How come he hasn't lost his degree? And why is he doing this 12 years straight? The cards are stacked against you, and it's the worst we've seen. There's no other industry out there comes close to it. The aftermath of the Fukushima nuclear accident measures to contain groundwater contamination. <laughs> Measures contain groundwater contamination. Like, the buildings are... Any nuclear scientist on the planet, including Ernie Gunnarsson, including Maggot Gunnarsson, any nuclear academic on the entire planet, when they seen that picture, they said, well, look, those reactors are gone, the fuel pools are gone. And 12 and a half years later, almost 13 years later, rather, we're, for some reason, on a, the majority of the population, if not all the population, like... It's, it's not even a percent of the population is aware of what I'm showing you. The entire media worldwide has diligently worked to lie to you well, and your friends and your family, so you can't even have a conversation. Well-being effects of a major natural disaster, the case of Fukushima. Fukushima is not a natural disaster, you kook, you batshit lunatic. You built it where they have a 38-year legacy of tsunamis that some are 300 feet high and where they have over a thousand serious earthquakes a year. They built it 60 kilometers away from the, from the tectonic plates where they go mm, like that every once in a while. And, and like to suggest that it was an accident there's almost too much to bear. Effects of the nuclear disaster in marine products in Fukushima. So what did you do? And by the way, we've done research expeditions for, for six years straight from Vancouver, British Columbia to Alaska for four to five months a year. And we provided all that documentation. It's still available up at my website, thenuclearproctologist.org. So there's nobody on the planet can say they didn't know. The ones that say they didn't know and they're in the academic community are lawyers. Effects of the nuclear disaster marine products in Fukushima. You wiped out the Pacific, the Western Hemisphere's coastline, for goodness sakes, for starters, and the insects. Effects of the Fukushima nuclear disaster and global public acceptance of nuclear energy. Public acceptance. Oh, they got a big black eye. That's okay. It'll fade out of memory. We'll make it go away and we'll start promoting nuclear again. That's what you see going on. And, seen all, and at the same time, they were promoting stocks 
for uranium, for instance. There's 500 uranium mining companies closed when Fukushima happened. The stocks went down to literally two pennies a share. They were bought up by the globalists, and then they wanted to artificially inflate the stocks so they can sell them off later for a ridiculous profit. And they liquidated millions and millions and millions and millions of retirees' pensions doing that in the last 12 years. Why has some people changed their attitude towards nuclear power after the accident in Fukushima? Why? Because the, you, each of these buildings are a thousand Chernobyls. Each of the buildings were pure uranium, pure plutonium, not like Chernobyl, which was graphite. Each of the buildings, by the way, not counting the fuel pool, just the reactor cores. Mox fuel in particular makes is is not a really good example because that's incredibly worse than reactor four which lost the same amount but it was the mix oxide fuel in this one so let's just there's four reactors at japan each reactor is worse than all nuclear meltdowns in history combined but at the top of each reactor was around 10 reactor cores 40 years of reactor cores probably a lot more at the top of each building, there's four buildings missing. The inventory we're talking about makes Chernobyl look like a paper towel, and Chernobyl was brutal. Why are, have some people changed their attitude? No, this is just a paid industry. The useful puppets for the industry. Characterizing regional scale temporal evolution of air dose rates after Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident, air dose rate, like the, it's still melting down for goodness sakes. The disposition just in Tokyo, 240 kilometers away, met, quantified Tokyo, 36 million people permanently abandoning that in the surrounding metropolitan uh, cities. Then with 36 million people should have ran immediately and never came back. Never looked back either. Transoceanic transport of cesium for Fukushima. The impacts a hypothetical Fukushima-like event of future nuclear plants in southern China. And so, because there's so many incredible facets to nuclear, it's a ridiculous amount of things you got to take into consideration. So if you look at the radioactive fallout, this model is 20 days, and this one is 21, covering the entire planet with Neptunium-239, which decays to Plutonium-239. Just one of the endless isotopes that we're worried about. An overview of Fukushima radionuclides measured in the Northern Hemisphere. It was measured everywhere. There was 220 million atoms of the iodine-129, for goodness sakes, in Canada. These are catastrophic numbers. From Chernobyl to Fukushima and beyond, it focused on thyroid cancer. Well, yeah, you should focus on thyroid cancer. First off, children, and particularly girls, in adults and children, are four times more affected than an adult. The models are based on a healthy 25-year-old male in perfect shape. And so the metrics are way off, way off what they should be on top of that. And then the dog studies, the dog's kidneys are 50%, 50 times, not percent, but 50 times more efficient than a human at removing the radioactive material. The human is 50 times more vulnerable than the dog is. And the dog studies on plutonium, every dog died in the studies. And the numbers we're talking about is stunning. So thyroid cancer is 13,646 out of 38,000 children. And pre-Fukushima was one in a million, maybe two in a million children. Uh, the, the tumors we're talking about, 13,646 out of 38,000, are around 2 inches. The thyroid gland is 3 by 5 inches.
estimating the impact on tourist benefits in Fukushima Prefecture. 2018. Like you, you really, you got you picked up 30 million one-ton bags. Did I mention it? How did that ever get out of the equation? And just because you moved a lot of the bags to the nuclear wasteland of Akuma and Furuba which are a couple of kilometers uh, south and north of, will it literally join onto the site, right? So because you moved the bags out, does that mean, because you only picked up 3%, not picked up, but they only scratched up 3% of the land, an inch and a, inch and an eighth of topsoil, and spent over 20 billion, and you got 30 million one-ton bags, which is equal to, five rows of one-ton trucks bumper to bumper wrapped around the entire planet five times. The metrics and all of it, are, it's, it's insane. This is insane. Tourists should never be going to Fukushima ever. Or any of the 14 prefectures where the food was banned for a decade. Canada didn't ban it, so they shipped all the food to Canada and poisoned 33 million people in Canada. Emergency responses and health consequences after the Fukushima accident, evacuation, location, relocation. Who, which gum bags they got under study, I wonder. He said the direct health effects of the radiation were relatively well controlled considering the severity of the accident. Uh, increased mortality among displaced elderly people. No, the plumes were killing around 3,000 people. They were trying to say that the 3,000 people that died, died because they had to evacuate their community. We've seen lots of cyclones and typhoons and hurricanes where six to s 15 million people at a time would evacuate and had nothing to go back to. Yet we didn't see, and the numbers we're talking about there are, are huge compared to Fukushima, and yet we didn't see thousands of people dying from evacuations. They, they died because they were evacuating into the plume, and the evidence of that is it's everywhere. The evidence is they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. So people evacuated through these areas, got incredible, ridiculous, catastrophic, life-altering doses. Because they evacuated through all these places, and these are, are now confirmed nuclear wastelands because they picked up 30 million one-ton bags. And that the people who've done the study are aware of that. They're just trying to manipulate you. Airborne radiation northern Serbia from Fukushima. Serbia! Let me bring it up for you. I showed you the air, airborne plumes lots, right? The models from different countries and studies quantifying those assertions. Let me see here. <clears throat> I have no idea what I got done with that now. Because the problem is I got so much that I, if I don't stay at it all the time, oh, there it is. It's where it's supposed to be. I just, I couldn't find it. Here we go. <laughs> uh, 
Almost there. Bear with me. Let me take a second. Okay, a little bit more than a second. 15, 20, 25. I'm ready. It's just, I got to scroll back to the top. The Fukushima radiation still circling the globe. Levels consistently rise and fall in a 30 day cycle. I'm just ready. But I want to show you a model. I'm going to just power through it. So this is the American's model. And you can see the plume constantly coming out of Japan. Let's do that again. See the plume coming out of uh, Fukushima. That's the, the red is the plume. And it changes colors for different isotopes. The model is only based on venting. This is based on 40 days of fallout. So the plume doesn't rise and fall over 40 days. It never stopped coming out. Right? It never stopped coming out. It's still hemorrhaging out of there today. Yeah, the biggest, you know, lost majority of its inventory is in the first six days. Absolutely. But nuclear is unique because it can consume at these enormous temperatures, say 9,000 degree Fahrenheit temperatures. It's consuming steel and rebar and cement and rock and water and everything else. It atomizes, aerosols, ionizes and radiates it. And so these plumes will never stop. An initial plume was a, what we consider a pulse event. Indication radioactive fallout in Rydia, Saudi Arabia, in Great Britain, in the upper troposphere above Germany, uh, in the Baltic Seas, in South Korea. It's, it's everywhere, fission products in the high Arctic. And that's backed up by lots and lots of studies, right? And a lot of these are very short studies where they just like do the first 20 days or something. Radiological impact in Korea following Fukushima nuclear accident. Uh, radioactive contamination of pine in Russia from Fukushima fallout. Um, Jesus, I can't remember what the hell that is. Kamchatka, that's Alaska. Artificial radio nuclear in Russia and Greece, it's like so, it's everywhere. Germany, and Slovenia, and Romania, you can't keep up with it, right? Beijing, China. Behavior of radioactive cesium during incineration, because you can't destroy it, you just liberate it back into the environment. And Japan took a billion pounds of highly contaminated tsunami debris, grinded it up, and took it to all the prefectures across the country and burned it in the incinerators. And we know in Tokyo there was one incinerator reported where three of the workers had heart attacks on the same day, cardiac arrest from the cesium. So it's not just cancer, it's not just thyroid. Heart, liver, lung, respiratory, pituitary, thyroid, adrenaline, Alzheimer's in the future. Uh, Down syndrome and autism is studied heavily immediately following a nuclear emissions. So they covered, they banned 14 prefectures in Japan by 55 countries worldwide. What do you think that means? You think, you, you know, because it goes back to that study that I just started on earlier that got under my skin where they claimed that it was isolated to the local area. Detections of xenon in Darwin, Australia. Australian nuclear industry is so despicable, isn't it? Cesium bearing particles. Again, when you hear cesium, you got to put in uranium, plutonium, curium, which is the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods, and a thousand other fission products. Cesium is the cover story for every nuclear accident in history. It's an ST isotope, but um, the curium, it's, you know, like plutonium is infinitely worse than cesium. And we're talking huge numbers of poundage in each uh, fuel assembly, 2%. And depending on how long it's in there, it might be producing much, much more. The longer you leave it in the reactor, the more it produces plutonium, which is a fission product. But it's lethal to everything. It's lethal to everything, it's particularly uh, mammals and animals humans so 
when you the cesium is going to be drowned out by the curium isotopes because that's going to be present see and but that's not a gamma so the curium isotope though you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium isotopes and your Geiger counter is not going to pick up the plutonium isotopes. And we're getting high readings here for the last week and a half or so, uh, constantly over 200 counts per minute. 180 counts used to be in an evacuation zone for a community pre-Fukushima. So I should abandon my house. Radio cesium fallout in the grasslands. Right, and so it's worldwide, the Canary Islands. And I could bore you and just go on and on with all these places. But the problem is that they don't want to acknowledge that anymore. Now they're saying nothing got out. So everything I'm showing you, all those studies are lies. The only thing is true is the newest version, which is does few little flakes of salt. Divide that by 22, and that's what they're saying is released from the multiple nuclear meltdowns, the four meltdowns and eight fuel pools that melted down starting this year. And they're claiming nothing got out in the last 12 and a half years. These studies tell you different, don't they? I hope. The studies, I hope, quantify that we got a real issue that needs serious investigation. And we've done... What we do here is forensic investigation where we go way down the rabbit hole with the documentation. And, you know, I do that constantly, but ultimately the average person, when you see a few pictures like this, we're hoping they'll come to their senses and say, well, that's just, this is insane. Influence of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear accident in the Spanish environment's radioactivity levels. And remember, you know, a lot of these countries were doing all kinds of mitigation, like Sweden and Denmark, uh, all the European countries. Uh, radio iodine, radio cesium in northern Greece due to Fukushima. Iodine-131, cesium, cesium-134-37 due to Fukushima reactors in Italy. Radioactivity measures... Uh, aerosol samples of two elevated stations in northern Italy, British Columbia, Lithuania measurements, uh, Slovakia, compare, comparison with global fallout in the Chernobyl accidents, which there are no comparison. Fukushima is worse than all. Global weapons nuclear fallout, all nuclear accidents in history combined still don't come close to one of the Fukushima's reactors. Because you're talking about the volume, too. But the volume of uranium and plutonium that was in those fuel pools dwarfs your nuclear weapons testing worldwide. But it made a many, many magnitudes of order. I apologize. I could have turned the mic off so you didn't have to listen to me slurping away. Bastard, Dana. France is such a scumbag, eh? France, Australia, United Kingdom, Canada, obviously, and Japan, South Korea, China, Taiwan, just to name a few. These are hideous, monstrous, idiot, morons, literally morons. That's the only way to describe the people in the nuclear industry. Dangerous terrorists is the best way, probably. High altitude location over European locations. Taiwan, of course, downplayed it. Taiwan had over 2,000 students from the universities, from the nuclear students, and former students, former alumni, former professors, academics, spammed the internet for several years. The university students spammed it all day, every day, if if they had places to spam, like where they were getting feedback. They would fight all day and claim it was harmless and innocuous and benign. It was like a banana and a potato chip and walking. And I'm so sick of it. And they spammed a living shit out of me for several years. And it came out. 
And I have those headlines. I bring them up once in a while, right? Fukushima did right. I can find them right away, but I don't think I have to. I should just do like radio shows. I shouldn't have to show evidence, actually. What am I saying? If I don't, I can't educate the population about this sleeper cell terrorist organization known as the nuclear industry. These are the scum of the earth. That's the one thing. Once you go down the rabbit hole on nuclear, the first thing, I don't know about you, but shocked the shit out of me was how degenerate these people actually are. How incredibly disgusting and despicable and anti-human, anti-species these disgusting parasites actually are. They're literally like some kind of weird human uh, mutated form of life. They look like us. They they walk around. They got they probably got ten ten toes and ten fingers. That's the, that's where the attributes of a human ends. And the inbreeding in the nuclear industry is frightening. What they've done for the last eighty years, all this inbreeding because of the secrecy, see. And so they started inbreeding with each other. And the current generation, the entitled generation, are are the most dangerous creatures we've come across. They're completely disconnected from the human experience. Radioactivity inspection of Taiwan for food products imported from Japan. And Taiwan was disgusting what they done to their own population. You know, ta Taiwan didn't like the natives that were there before them, so they moved them all up to Orchard Island. And so eventually they gathered up a lot of nuclear waste and they were like, well, here's here's the plan. We're going to go to Orchard Island, tell the natives we're going to build a canning factory for tuna and salmon and stuff like that. And we're going to give every native out there a bursary each year, each month, year after year after year, if they let us build a canning factory. And the natives were like, Geez, sure, yeah, you give me a bunch of money and everybody in my family, that's great. And so they built a nuclear dump there and pretended it was a canning factory for tuna and salmon. So when the natives found out what had happened, they were like, so too bad you signed a contract. <laughs> Taiwan. If that's not disgusting, what actually is? If that's not revolting, actually, what is? You know, what really? How do you get more revolting than that? How do you get more despicable and sadistic and twisted? And how do you become... How do you get more of a terrorist than that? It's unbelievable that people like that actually exist. Nuclear industry, that's normal. That's normal. That's what they do. That's the only thing they're actually good at is being terrorist. Aerial measurements of xenon concentrations off the west coast of Vancouver Island following Fukushima. That's terrorist right there. They hit, they hit the plumes of the other stuff and claimed that there was no adverse side effects. It was two hundred. There was twenty million atoms of iodine one thirty one per liter. There was four hundred fifty thousand atoms per square meter of uh, xenon one thirty three in Washington recorded. There was two hundred twenty million atoms of the iodine one twenty nine in Ottawa, Canada recorded per liter. All of this per liter. Um, the twenty million particles per liter. The and the particles are nasty. That's nasty stuff you're talking about. And then the atoms, 220 million atoms of iodine, these are catastrophic numbers. They saturate the thyroid glands of all the species and all the people. And then so everybody and all the species were producing and still are radioactive hormones. Just to name one of the many, many uh, catastrophic things that are coming out of that kind of a dose. And that this was sustained, too. It's the equivalent of a snowstorm that never, after 20 days, covers the entire planet and never melts, never goes away, and the snow is every day, forever, for millions of years. That's what radiation emissions are. They never go away. You can't destroy them. And they assimilate into every, all the plants, all the the wheat, all the barley, all the pharmaceutical plants that they grow all become radioactive with anthropogenic man-made radiation, which is not created by the solar system. 
Reducing radiation exposure using commonly available objects. This, this, this blows me away, this one. Rather than move the people out of the nuclear wasteland. Rather than move people out of the nuclear wasteland. This study showed that. One. Look at all the people in the study. And I get a load of this. And it's soil at a depth of 10 centimeters from the surface. The radiation rates decrease from 3.6 to 0 0.62 microsieverts. But why would you measure the microsieverts, for God's sakes? It's, it's a nuclear faller. You don't measure that in microsieverts. You're measuring physical atoms. And the count rate decreased from 3,120, which is physical atoms, to 352 counts per minute. And each atom is pulsing energy every second. So they're only measuring gamma. They're, they're not measuring alphas and betas and neutrons because they're better than everybody else. They, they don't have to be honest. So 352 counts per minute. So think of a count per minute as an atom that if it's in your body, your body attacks it for the rest of your life with white blood cells, which gets rid of, you have to displace red blood cells to do that. And red blood cells carry oxygen and nutrition. And so now you, your body is under siege. And you got less oxygen, less nutrition, so you're starting to feel uh, lethargic and lazy. But the radiation dose rate, the count rate, like see, you can't use both of these. The, 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 the count rate is the physical atoms are sequestered in your muscles, your organs, your bones. If it's in your children's bones, you're mutating their, still, their, their stem cells. The dose rate is the external energy pulsing. Which is true, it, it, it's dear, but the most important thing is acknowledge that you're breathing it in. If you're breathing it in, you have to evacuate. Breathing in is not an option. And that's what they're making it, an option. And they're trying to confuse you by misrepresenting it. So both the radiation dose rate, count rate reduced from the soil was covered. Now they're talking about 10 centi centimeters down. Remember, the bags are, are just an inch an inch and an eighth of topsoil. They didn't dig up 10 centimeters, right, three inches. They only dug up an inch, um, inch and a eighth. So reduce the soil was covered with everyday items. Yeah, you're going to cover the soil with everyday items, are you? Such as a magazine. You're going to throw magazines all over your garden so you can go out and get in your car, are you? Such as a magazine, 20 millimeters thick, uh, foam boards, wooden boards, the same thickness. To protect the residents from unnecessary radiation exposure in the existing exposure situation, covering contaminated soil with a wooden board or a magazine, either 20 millimeter thick, is useful to reduce the radiation dose. So what they're skirting around is that they're pretending people are not inhaling it, which is impossible. And so to protect them, you move them out of there. You don't keep them there. Um, you know, like, if, if, if I take a car tire in a, in a classroom with kids and we set it on fire, the smoke, the smoke is, you, could, you know, you can imagine, the smoke's going to be really bad really quick, right? Like, no, no, you're, you're okay. You'd be like, no, Dana, the place is full of smoke. Let's get them out of there. We're calling the cops on you. But with radiation, you can't see it. You can't smell it. You can't hear it. You can't feel it. You can't touch it. You can't pick it up. You can't perceive it. And it's much worse than that car tire is. Because it affects you for the rest of your life, every second for the rest of your life. Protect the residents from unnecessary radiation exposure in the existing exposed situation. Covering the contaminated soil. So the claim nothing is airborne, everything is in the soil. We collect the soil from the site where rainwater collects at a radiation dose rate of 30 microsieverts, the upper limit of measurement, and a count rate of 22,000 counts per minute. 22,000 counts per minute. So each millisiever, divide 30. Let me see if I can do it. I want to get the number here. So we got 22,200 counts per minute divided by 30 microsieverts equal. 
So each mic receiver is 740 counts per minute. Wow. Now, they're only acknowledging gamma. They're not acknowledging curium and uranium, plutonium, and all the nasty stuff. They're only, they're only acknowledging CC-137. <laughs> uh, we measured the radiation dose rate and count rate with the surface meters in contact with the surface of the dish containing the contaminated soil. The value for the model radiation. See, why would you measure it? It's 12 units sieverts with count rates of 7,752 counts per minute. Uh, during the indoor experiments, we used dish soil as you model the contaminated ground to evaluate how effectively various everyday items can shield radiation. In this study, the radiation dose rate count rates decreased by approximately 50% when the thickness of the shielding material, either in the magazine, two layers of foam board, two layers of 10 millimeter board, wood board, was you know, 20 millimeters or greater. In addition, even though several types of cloth with four layers were used to shielding objects, their efficiency to shield the radiation dose rate was below 10%. And the polyurethane cloth had less shielding efficiency than the other cloth material. This is why you need a six foot wall, right, to separate you from the radiation, because it'll pulse through a two foot wall like it didn't exist and radiate you or your children or your friends or your families or your loved ones or just eight million species on your planet. So this was the comparison. Now they're, they're talking about, they're pretending that it's not airborne. They're pretending, they're pretending that they're human, which I think is, should be a criminal. That anybody in the nuclear industry to claim that they're human should be a crime. They, they should be at least 30 year jail sentence for doing something like that. Like, you get how many bags we're talking about, as far as you can see, right? There's 105,000 sites in 2019 like this. 30 million one-ton bags, which is only 3% of the land. So, contaminated, so newspaper, 16 sheets of newspaper, four corrugated cardboard, two layers is... Uh, eight millimeters, a magazine, 25 millimeters. The author declares they had no conflict of interest. Well, if you didn't, you would have said, you got to get them out of there, everything's friggin' airborne, right? It's humiliating that people like that actually exist. I think it's humiliating that they were able to get a degree and then weaponize it against you and your loved ones and the eight million species. Airborne radioiodine in northern Syria, Serbia. Preliminary forensic engineering study and aggravated aggravation of releases during the Fukushima accident. Like 105,000 sites just in Fukushima prefecture. Remember, the food was banned from 14 prefectures for a decade by 55 countries. Not because of unisievers or millisievers, because of physical atoms, which is what they're picking up in the bags, which were, were the minimum number for the bags, by the way, was 100,000 becquels a kilogram. So multiply that by 64 to get a square meter. And there's so many studies out to confuse you. It's very difficult, but... But what I want you to take away from all of it was, why did you do so many studies if it was 2.2 grams of tritium? Because that's the new official version, is it's just 2.2 grams of tritium. And uh, I, sh I, shouldn't say, I shouldn't say anything, but last night when I'd done the show, I, my, my throat, because that was my first time using the peroxide, right? And just Particularly, I wanted to remind you to rub it behind your ears and, and along the jugular veins and stuff like that. Because whatever you put on your skin is soaked up immediately in your blood and distributed within minutes throughout your body. And uh, I couldn't believe it. Like, we finished the show, and I went right into the bathroom, took peroxide, which I now got in the studio with me. Um, and wow, I was, you know, like, you can just feel, like, all this air and energy. That's what it felt like. And then, uh, just before it went live, 
I, I sat there and, and, uh, and parted myself up with all kinds of uh, peroxide. And how does my voice sound all the way up to here? Pretty darn good, right? Remember, I, I just, yesterday I was dying. I thought I had to go get uh, antibiotics to deal with three weeks of the flu, and I could, my throat was shot. I wasn't even going to do a show last night. And uh, I, I basically didn't, did I? Because I shot the show, show, had turned the volume off, forgot to turn it back on. And then I realized, oh, shit, three quarters of the show, I never had no volume. I was heartbroken. But I was so giddy with this working, I couldn't believe it. Uh, so after it'll take four, five, six, seven days for that to really start doing wonders. But everybody should buy peroxide. And you're going to need health, uh, health ailments whatsoever. What you're going to do is you're going to saturate your body with oxygen, right? And it's really good at killing viruses. And from what the doctor on the video last night was saying, a cancer cells, he's an oncologist. And that's the first thing he gives cancer patients is a big bottle of this and tells them to wash yourself twice a day. And he said, I don't give people chemotherapy. That's just stupid. I won't give people something I'm not going to take. Why would I do that? So where do you do all these studies? Why did you pick up 30 million one-ton bags if there's only 2.2 grams of tritium? And why is the entire planet changing the story and claiming nothing got out as of July the 13th, 2023, this year? Right? And the original story came out of South Korea. It was a professor of nuclear and quantum engineering from major university. And we, we've dumped all over that guy now since July 13th. I don't think there's a day went by we don't try to take a big dump on him. In fact, the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant accident in the western North Pacific in the China Seas. Radio cesium distribution fluxes in the typical Force at the late stage after the accident of Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Radio cesium, every time I hear is that. Oh, that's, no, that's radio cesium, I'm sorry. In seawater, sediment marine, uh, the little tiny species, in the coastal waters off Fukushima. Like the, the numbers, uh, I'll bring up some numbers for you so you can get some context here in a second. Radiological indexes, follow up measurements. I want to show you all these studies. So you can see the money they threw at this thing, and the majority of these studies were meant to downplay Fukushima, right? But what did they do, though, they quantify Fukushima happens, right? Because the story now is Fukushima didn't happen. <laughs> Not confusing at all, is it? Not even a little bit confusing. And it got me drove crazy that they're, they're claiming that the buildings didn't melt down. Right, that drives me absolutely nuts. Like I went to Fukushima and counted the bags. Oh. I thought he did. Twenty nine million nine hundred and ninety nine I'm sorry. Let's do that again. Twenty-nine million nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Oh, I didn't even finish that one properly. Oh, that teach me. Let me correct that for the next time anyway. So that don't happen to us the next time. Fear of nuclear power. Evidence of, oh, can we go back? Wait a second. Okay, let me show, I'm going to show you some of the numbers. Uh, temporal evolution of air dose rates after Fukushima. In the litter layers of different forest types of Fukushima. And what happens is it kills the bacteria and the fungus in the forest. Radioactive fallout has been doing that for 80 years. But uh, these big pulse events, and Fukushima was the biggest and the baddest of them all, what that done was it wiped out the bacteria and the fungus in the majority of the forests in the northern hemisphere. And so now the foliage and the litter 
and the foliage doesn't rather break down because you don't have an ecosystem because you can't have an ecosystem without the fungus and the bacteria. So as that played out over the last 12 years, what you would expect to see happening now is they would, when they have lightning strikes, the the foliage and the litter isn't broken down anymore. So you got these big chunks that didn't normally exist drifting a thousand feet or five thousand feet and landing still on fire. And so you got these random with a bit of wind, this is just catastrophic. And that's what we've been seeing now for the last four years or so in particular, is this relentless, brutal consistency. And so another problem with that was the forest doesn't soak up the water anymore because you don't have the biota and you're not bit and which is right so the and the plants and the trees can't function properly because they need fungus and bacteria the whole ecosystem literally depends upon fungus and the bacteria and so now it doesn't soak up the water so you have all these incredible floods flash floods because the water is not getting soaked up in the land anymore but normally the land was really thirsty right and it would soak up the water constantly and replenish itself. That doesn't, uh, respiratory, that, does, that doesn't work anymore because of the 80 years of emission, that pulse event that was Fukushima. Abundance of birds in Fukushima is judged from Chernobyl. Uh, but we got tons of documentation showing that's simply not true. There is no abundance of birds in Fukushima. Between the effects of radiation, Chernobyl, you can't, Chernobyl was nothing compared to Fukushima. You can't quantify Chernobyl or F Fukushima by using Chernobyl. Ch Chernobyl was a graphite reactor. It was a brand new reactor. It was two years old. It didn't have any fuel pools at the top of the buildings with decades of reactor cores. Fukushima reactors were some of the, at the time, some of the biggest in the world. The site itself was one of the biggest in the world. The reactors were pure uranium, pure plutonium pellets. And there's huge reactor cores compared to Fukushima or Chernobyl. And at the top of each building was two fuel pools stuffed with reactor cores. You can't quantify it by suggesting that Chernobyl is a metric. Uh, air, ambient dose rates induced by radio cesium in Fukushima terrestrial environment. I'll bring it together for you here in a second. Bear with me. Radioactivity impact of Fukushima nuclear accident on the atmosphere. In fact, some studies were showing, right, that we destroyed a huge chunk of the ozone layer. And if you look how the, if you also look how radiation works with free radicals for the species, it's nasty what it does to the ecosystem. Let me do this for a second. That's not the best one. Let me find something better. If you pick up 30 million one-ton bags, you abandon all the communities, uh, there was 2,400 farmland stuff, 2,400 farmland, rather, that they wanted to put the bags in. So it gives you context of how many bags we're talking about. 30 million one-ton bags, but nothing got out, and everything is in the tanks. Do you get how the story doesn't make sense? So let me go. I got, and some of you are quite familiar with this stuff, I would imagine. We gathered up a lot of documentation, and one of, the, and we got all kinds of different types, right? But one of my favorite is these headlines from the world's different medias worldwide that had documented the radioactive fallout across Japan. Let me see where I'm to. The whole story is crazy. The whole story is just crazy as it gets. We're going to flash through. We're going to flash through a bunch of these headlines. 
Radioactive substances for Fukushima belong to the landowners, not us. Well, 30 million one-ton bags. They didn't pick up the 30 million one-ton bags because they were bored. They picked up the 30 million one-ton bags because they had nuclear meltdowns. So it belongs to the nuclear industry, not to the landowners. These are dirty bombs we're talking about. 30 million massive one-ton dirty bombs. We hear radiation levels are up even in Tokyo. Reports to spent fuel pools one, two, and three started to boil. I forgot to get back on the page. Bear with me. We're almost ready to go. And heaven forbid I make a mistake, because the industry will chop that. See, they don't know what he's talking about. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's going on. So the fuel pool, well, the fuel, the fuel pools are up at the top of the building. There is no top to the building, and it's, and why didn't they raise that building all the way to the ground? Surely there was enough homeless people left over. Nuclear scientists are not going there. I know what you're saying, Daniel. That's cruel. No, but that's what they do. They use the homeless, the destitute, the victims of society, the immigrants who don't speak the language, your loved ones. Uh, reports to spend fuel pool one, two, and three started to boil. <laughs> what about reactor four? They don't get no love in or what? In fact, they refuse to acknowledge that reactor four <laughs> looks like that. I showed you Ernie Gunnison earlier, earlier doing that, actually. France says Japan lost control. The French should leave the country. 1,500 tons of holy radioactive sludge may end up as soil for the Gardening. Well, of course, not going to up the soil. It's, it's highly radioactive sludge, for God's sakes. What do you mean using it for gardening? If there, this, one, this is just one a filtration plant, water filtration for a large city. Not that large, but, you know, big city. In 2011, had 50,000 one-ton bags of radioactive sludge from the water filtration. They can't get rid of it because it's too radioactive. I'm sorry, that's uh, five prefectures they're saying. 50,000 tons of sediment from the water filtration was so radioactive they couldn't get rid of it, which meant they poisoned everybody to drink that water. And remember, children are a thousand times more vulnerable than an adult. Holly radioactive sewage 30 miles from Fukushima. Cesium levels at 334,000 becquerels per kilogram. Not microsievers, not millisievers. You should always count radioactive fallout in the physical atoms. And a Beckwell is a pulse of energy each second. So an atom typically will pulse energy every second. So cesium levels up to 334,000 Beckwells per kilogram. Per kilogram, multiply it by 64 to get a square meter where the children are waiting for the school bus. Debris from near Fukushima disaster plants is being ground up and burned in other parts of Japan. Disposal of quake debris begins in Tokyo to be burned in Koto. Radiation fears will continue for years over a billion pounds. Why are you bringing it to other prefectures and burning it and liberating it into the environment? Because you can't destroy it. They found plutonium in every sample. In every sample. Iodine-131 detected in Tokyo at multiple locations during November. 350,000 becquerels a kilogram in the kit's garbage facility. All of this, they're only looking for gamma. And we don't even know if they're actually looking for gamma. And they're just writing random numbers or something. You know, Tokyo it was looking at 220 or 29 million becquerels a kilogram. Is the government trying to contaminate every region in Japan by burning radioactive debris? If everyone is contaminated in a relative sense, nobody is? Incinerating radioactive material could contaminate the environment. What do you mean, could? And you can see the headline right there from the media that produced it the majority of the times, World Nuclear News. 
Fukushima plant will burn radioactive waste incinerators run around the clock. But nothing got out. The official story is nothing got out. Thank God nothing got out. Look how bad it is. Jeez, imagine if something got out. <laughs> that's nuclear, see? Because that's how, that's like, nothing got out. Okay, well, nothing got out, but jeez, look how bad it is. Thank God nothing got out. 350 kilometers away to sewage plants, transforming in other substances. You know, it's hellish when you see that stuff. Japan burning Fukushima debris 10 miles from the Diachi site. Post Fukushima horror, severe impact on the oceanic environment. Well, thank God nothing got out, only 2.2 grams of treating, but don't worry, it's, it's in a thousand tanks, Dana. Yeah, but what about all the evidence? <laughs> Does that matter? It doesn't, right? Nobody, everybody's like, what? What did Trump do? I, can't, I don't want to watch that. What did Trump do? I want to know what Trump done. An unpredictable amount of damage to the Pacific. That's China Daily. So when you look at all the media that have come out the first couple of years and acknowledged it, uh, the Manichi, the piece of shit in, from Japan media, massive radioactive waste bill up in Tokyo. Now they're saying like nothing got out of 2.2 grams of tritium. Tokyo suburbs are past capacity. Well, first off, they're 240 kilometers away. So what do you mean capacity? It means they got no room for any more radioactive fallout, Dana. Post Fukushima horror, severe impact to oceanic environment, unpredictable amount of damage to the Pacific. Yeah, but nothing got out, so don't worry about it. It's you know, 2.2 grams of tritium. Don't worry, it's, it's in a thousand tanks, Dana. There's no meltdown, Dana, freaking fear mongering. I don't know what that's all about. Tokyo officials blast parents who want kids to avoid ingesting radiation at school. Uh, ex skiff uh, City assemblymen in Tokyo to school children don't be egoists. Eat your school lunch to share the pain of Tohoku. I don't understand why the parents didn't just deal with that right there on the spot. First time since the meltdown, surge in radioactive cesium levels causes incinerators near so Tokyo to shut down. Surge in radioactive cesium, not to, not tritium, Dana, but cesium. Yeah, but the, the government said nothing got out, Dana, so shut up. Fear mongering. Well, you got a fear mongering all the time for it, Dana. Like, pretending this never happened is the a fatal mistake. That's a fatal mistake to pretend this never happened and there's no adverse side effects. That's a fatal mistake. If I run over with you a car, it's on camera from seven different shops and you collect up all those videos and I say to you in court that uh, oh, I didn't run him over and it never even happened. He never got ran over. And they show all the videos, and the, the jury looks at you and says, well, it never happened. The jury says, well, you seem like a nice guy. I, I believe you. Yeah, but we, the victim is like, we got all the videos. We got all the hospital. We got all the witnesses. We, we got the police reports. We got your confession. Yeah, I wasn't feeling good. I had the flu. I just wanted to go home, so I confessed. But it, it never even happened. You, no, you ran him over, Dana, and you backed up and ran him over again. You're like... No, 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 it didn't happen. And jury's like, well, he, he said it didn't happen, so. That's what the nuclear industry's been doing for 80 years, and now since Fukushima, that's what they do all day long to you. Why are you sitting there and taking it? I had, I had a personal stalker for over 10 years from Japan. He was assigned to make my life miserable, and he did, right? It, we, we got a T-shirt dedicated to him. That's hit over 160 sales, by the way. <laughs> Bless your heart, scumbag Charlie. We we named him uh, Calm Down Charlie. Uh, Calm Down Charlie. Because he would call up and freak out, right? Yo, scammer. Yo, filthy liar. I used to let him ramble. But, you know, for years I just tried to get rid of him, but he wouldn't go away. So we finally gave up on him. We said, okay, Calm Down Charlie. This is your moment, man. 
You, your microphone, you tell the world what Dana done. And he had nothing, literally nothing. He has the same lines every time. Yo, filthy scammer, you sick blastard. And so we immortalized those phrases in a t-shirt dedicated to Calm Down Shirley, which is now our best-selling t-shirt. <laughs> Links are below. Get one for your kids and your loved ones for Christmas. I make zero profit off those shirts because I'm stupid. It would have been the best profit t-shirt I got out there, and I decided just to get it out there because Charlie deserves to be remembered. It's important to share the pain. I'd, I'd kick him in the knee and like, how's the pain? You like it? Is, is it good being sharing the pain with you? I'd kick him in the nuts. i say, how's that pain? Is it, you like that too? Piece of shit. First time since the meltdown. Give me a break. Tokyo's, I'll show you coming up. Tokyo's a nuclear wasteland. Radioactive followed around Fukushima as incinerators being hidden. The, the ash from Chiba, which is by Tokyo, at 70,000 becquels a kilogram. The ash. So imagine how much was liberated back into the environment from whatever they were burning, which was the garbage in the city, right? So imagine how bad it is. You, you, the, the water filtration, you can't get rid of the sediment. The, the sewage, you can't get rid of the sewage. And the garbage is so radioactive, you can't get rid of the ash because of the radiation. One great big stupid nuclear wasteland. And they could have come up with solutions and resolved it, but no, no, it never happened. Never happened. I don't care how many witnesses you got. Never happened. Not official story, <laughs> which blows me away. And it's pretty hard to blow me away when I've been at this for 12 and a half years. The official story as of July 23rd was that never happened. That no longer exists. No, never happened. Have a nice day. Because they're responsible for killing the planet. And the research expeditions that we carried out quantifies that, right? Not almost quantifies it, but quantifies it. I still have nightmares about the expeditions. I got like seven pictures right there. Let me show you them. <laughs> no, that was... Uh, I washed up on the rocks that night in a hurricane and done thousands and thousands of dollars of damage. Had limp into Queen Charlotte City, which is quite a long ways away. And that took several days. But that was a night of terror, really. I right? woke up on the rocks. But anyway, uh, the research expeditions, uh, I went back for six years. The species didn't come back. They're permanently exterminated. Fukushima wiped out the ecosystem, and they don't want to get blamed for it, but they, you know, I've done six years of it. The species didn't come back, so they're, they're guilty. They refuse to acknowledge that, just even today, they refuse to acknowledge the species are gone. Now they're trying to blame it on rats. There's this little punk up there uh, for the last uh, year or something like that has came out with a, uh, a report claiming that the rats ate everything. All the birds' eggs were eaten by the rats. Everything. All the species are gone because of the rats. And uh, you better hope I never catch us up to them. U.S. to burn hundreds of tons of radioactive waste from Germany and Tennessee. It's like the industry is completely out of control everywhere you look. Fukushima will start burning radioactive waste 100,000 becquels a kilogram to be incinerated. One billion pounds of debris in the exclusion zone. First off, there's zero possibility everything's 100,000 becquels a kilogram. Someone's going to be millions of becquels a kilogram. In fact, the, the majority of it. You had eight fuel pools and four massive reactors melt down and release their entire inventories into the environment. We've never seen anything like this in history. This is the worst, most catastrophic event. Than, it's worse than a meteor strike because... It sneaks up on you. You're breathing it. You're drinking it. You're consuming it. You're showering in it. You're doing your laundry in it. Mysterious black substance at a million becquels a kilogram. And this is 
uh, cesium they're talking about all over Minnesota, which they moved the kids back into a few years later, by the way, so they can get, you know, some accolades for the nuclear industry. Oh, it's not so bad. Over a million becquels a kilogram of cesium, mysterious black dust. Ten million becquels a kilogram. So multiply it by 64 to get a square meter in the Minnesota soil samples. Japan government not revealed plutonium 241 detection that and the radiation dose was 50 times higher than the total of the other three plutonium isotopes, which would have been 238, 239, 240, I guess. Japan government did not reveal a plutonium. Fifty thousand becquels a kilogram of radioactive cesium in tile near Tokyo. It's terrifying that the sample was from the sides of the streets. These are and again only acknowledged in cesium. If the industry had to acknowledge all the other isotopes, they've been in the business uh, sixty years ago. They couldn't exist. And then by pretending that there's only cesium is is a fucking big mistake let's put it that way calling for immediate monitoring 175 billion becquels flow per day in just one river in one city now 175 billion becquels per day of physical atoms we're talking about right per second in just one river, one city, 60 kilometers from the meltdown. Uh, so a gram of cesium is, I think it's 88 curries. And each curry is 37 billion uh, becquels. So 37 billion times 88 is like 4, tw 4 trillion or 5 trillion uh, Beckles per pulses of energy per minute, say. So 1.75 billion is just a fraction of a fraction of a gram, right? It's infinitely worse than that, unfortunately. Radioactivity is with 6.15 million Beckles a square meter, 60 kilometers from the meltdown. Every organism in Fukushima Prefecture is contaminated with radiation. Every organism in Fukushima is contaminated with radiation. So it's not in the tanks. Tokyo neighbor cesium, we covered that one already. Half a million becquels a kilogram of cesium found 75 miles from Fukushima. Right, so they should have picked up 30 million one ton bags over there too. Fukushima 311 follow figures released uh, 4 million becquels in a major city and contamination didn't come from the iodine 131 or the cesium 137. Four million becquels per square meter in a major city. Oxford University Press. Thorium detected 100 kilometers from Fukushima meltdown. High levels of radioactivity found extensively. The air was 150 kilometers from the meltdown, as radioactive as areas close to the meltdown. 170,000 becquels in the sewage in Fukushima, high levels from Fukushima, rather, high levels of radioactive material in Tokyo. So excreting 170,000 becquels a kilogram is ridiculous radioactive. In Japan Times followed from Fukushima causing problems 180 kilometers away. It's all become no good. Contaminated wild vegetables, fish, and uh, wild game, everything is radioactive. Everything's covered with a blanket of radioactive death. Mysterious radioactive substances, 180 kilometers from Fukushima, alpha particles at 200 counts per minute. 
Four million becquerels a square meter of cesium is soil samples from a school in Chiba right next door to Tokyo. 27,000 becquerels a kilogram in a kindergarten of cesium. Remember your cesium, replace it with uranium, plutonium, americium, neptunium, strontium, etc., 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 etc. Tokyo area turned out to be as contaminated as Fukushima. Oh. Air samples in Tokyo, 270 times more contaminated with cesium-137. It's so dishonest just to use cesium over and over and over. It's it's complete, un, completely unacceptable to do that. So they should have picked up at least 30 million one-ton bags in Tokyo. Tokyo on a radiation threat on the March the 20th. Government simulation showed radioactive plumes of Krepton-85 over Tokyo. You know, Superman, your children love, you know, the Krepton, everything's Krepton, your children. Well, it killed all the animals in all the studies. I said he brainwashed your children, right? Same as the Hulk, same as Spider-Man, all created by the nuclear industry to promote the nuclear scum, degenerate, monstrous, moron industry. 300,000 becquerels a square meter radioactive iodine deposited in areas near Tokyo before the end of March. Only includes iodine-131, for goodness sakes. Atmospheric behavior, disposition, budget of radioactive materials from Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Plant 2011. The Regional Environmental Research Center, National Institute for Environmental Studies. I can't believe them. They're, they're official. Why would I believe that? High radiation levels near Tokyo linked to Fukushima rain caused 29 million becquerels a square meter in soil. Government says double the last test. That's that's just a rainfall we're talking about, though. And it never goes away. It's there forever. Talk about drinking water unsafe for infants. Now, they're only talking about the iodine 131. At the supermarket in eastern Tokyo, stocks of plastic two-liter mineral water bottles sold out in 20 minutes. Uh... If, if it's unsafe for infants, it's unsafe for everybody. Because you didn't want all the infants getting sick the couple of, next couple, over the next couple of years, right? That's what a... Uh, I just think this industry, this terrorist organization known as Nuclear Power... The nuclear industry, the, some of the biggest terrorists, of course, is the International Atomic Energy Agency. They're the one who cooks up the cover stories. It's true about 70% of the Japanese territory is polluted by radioactive material. Tokyo contaminated it with highly toxic radiation. So, which means they should have picked up at least 30 million one ton bags in Tokyo also. 276,000 becquerels a kilogram of radioactive cesium from soil samples near Tokyo and Kashiwa, almost 18 million becquerels a square meter. But they're only talking about cesium. Like, they only talk about cesium. i got to do it again now because nuclear won't play fair. And uh, a lot of this just breaks my heart. Now, I cover it all the time, but it still impacts me, unfortunately. It's hard, It's pretty hard to switch off, just kind of. I, I get like, what the long-term effects are, and you, you will too, because you're, you're you can't escape it either. Keep going. I was going to do something else, but I can't remember what it was. Cesium level spiking from unusually high amounts of fallout in Okutuma, Tokyo, up to 300,000 becquerels a square meter, home to the world's largest drinking water reservoir of its kind built to supply Tokyo. There's a picture of it below. So you're supposed to abandon it, right? Let me see if I can remember what I was trying to remember.
On Togo Air, soil testing funds radioactivity up to Chernobyl's relocation levels. 919,000 becquels a square meter. 16, or uh, used to be 55 becquels a cubic meter was an evacuation zone at a nuclear plant. So everything was always hemorrhaging out of these disease factories. So they jacked it up to 180 counts per minute. It was an evacuation zone. And... Um, They, 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 the Geiger counter is not very effective at finding radiation. You want, and basically, they're so bad, you should multiply whatever you find by 600. Because you can't measure, you, you know, you can't measure the, ga uh, the alphas, the neutrons, the betas, or all the gammas. And it's not just iodine-131, by the way, that goes in the thyroid. All the cesium goes for the thyroid, too. Okay, now I remember. Hang on here. Hang on, I'll find it. I don't know if I put it over here or over there. It's so important that uh, I can't think of anything more important than the Fukushima story currently. This is a global catastrophic event for all, all humans and all species, including the scumbags that are covering it up. Let's just let my uh, research populate there for a second. Uh, nothing to fear, said the government. The government is not supposed to be your enemy. And they, worldwide, they've, they've turned themselves willingly into your enemy, worldwide. They've done everything they could to disrupt you having a future. And they finally succeeded beyond their wildest dreams, I suppose. Like the reality of it is, nuclear scientists are not going to Fukushima. They won't even go within 100 kilometers. So when you talk about cesium, it's not just 134 and 137 you've got to worry about. And cesium is the last one I'm worried about. That single, you're not going to read that single because it's going to be drowned out by strontium. And the biggest byproduct is the curium isotopes. This is the biggest byproduct of radiated fuel rods. Is curium. curium is way worse than plutonium. It's, it's easy to say 20 times worse. And it's the biggest byproduct of the radiated fuel rods. The fuel pools are full of them. But you got to worry about all the isotopes. Everything coming from a nuclear meltdown is a hot particle. And it only takes one hot particle to ultimately spoil your retirement plan or your children's future. You endless isotopes of iodine and xenons. And North America is 450,000 becquels a kilogram of xenon. Or I'm sorry, a cubic meter of xenon. Burns the hole through your lung, ends up in your... Uh, bones and mutate your stem cells. Kryptons, all their daughters. Uranium and all their daughters. Everything comes from uranium anyway. Isotopes of plutonium, they're, all of that is 100% man-made. None of it's created by the solar system. The, all of the, by the way, all of this, or not all of it, but the, almost all of it is anthropogenic man-made. It's not created by the solar system. And so what they done was they conflated these, right, to, to leave you confused. And they call it like, they call it a new element. But these, these are new elements, but they're man-made, and they're we don't have an immune trigger to defend against it. My God, it's so good to have my voice back. It's been three weeks. It's been three weeks for me. I almost forgot what my voice was like. Squeaky, loud, obnoxious. And so each time today when I get like my throat start to go a little nutty on me, clunk, up come to, to peroxide. And I would say in another day or two, I'll conquer. I was going to go get antibiotics, uh, going to get a, um, antibiotics to deal because like I had like strep throat for goodness sakes. 
And, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to try to show you all the other isotopes, the anthropogenic man-made stuff. I'm just showing you, you've got to worry about all of that. And when you see just cesium-137, cesium-134, like they're cutting your throat. You're cutting your chi they're cutting your children's throat. They're cutting everybody's future's throat. They're cutting the throat of all the species. That's what they're doing when they only acknowledge cesium. When they only acknowledge cesium, they're the worst that human... Like Ted Bundy is a little angel compared to the people that only acknowledge cesium. Doctor finds uranium zirconium in Tokyo's residence fingernails were becoming nuclear fuel rods. None got out then. I mean, 2.2 grams of tritium. 40,000 microsieverts. So, a microsiever, you should think of it as 740 counts per minute. So, 740 counts per minute times 40,000. Well, that's going to be a pretty number. Oh, well, I can't wait to see that one. Is uh, 29 million counts uh, per minute. So you imagine your Geiger counter going, but way faster than that every minute, counting <laughs> pulses. At, and each of these pulses are the speed of light. Oh, I love Nuki so much. They're so friendly. Neutron beam observed 13 times. It, some people call them UFOs, right? But they're the neutron beams. They're, they're like the aurora. They cause these flashes, these blue flashes. Uh, measured 1.5 kilometers southwest of the plant. Yeah, no kidding. What was the date on that? I wonder. March the 24th, 2011. Japan time. Nothing got out. But today they're like, nothing got out. Only There's 2.2 grams of tritium. Don't worry, it's all in a thousand tanks. So have a nice day. No more questions, please. Neutron rays measured in Tokyo. Uranium-235 found in Chiba, but at 20 kilometers from Tokyo. Can't be detected by most Geiger counters. People in Tokyo, the black substance is here on the roof. 4,000 beckles a kilogram of cesium. Contamination never disappears. No. You can get all the millions of one-ton bags you want, but you can't get rid of it. 30 million one-ton bags. That's acknowledged. But as of July the 30, uh, 13th of this year, they're saying none of that happened. No reactors melted down. There's no bags, there's no radioactive fallout, everything's okay, nuclear's wonderful, everybody should have a fuel rod up their butt. Tokyo suburbs contamination three times higher than areas one mile from Fukushima. Significant contamination in Tokyo. You can see the, again, I remind you, right, that these look the same, but they're not. They're not the same. They're just aggregated and then republished. Everything is linked back to the original story, uh, to that site originally, right? I don't know what that was, but I didn't have my headphones on, so I'm not going to hang around and find out because we're trying to run through a bunch of headlines. Cesium from Fukushima plant fell all over Japan. Well, so did all those. If cesium fell through... Oh, God, then so did the curium, so did neptunium, so did all the americium, so did all the plutoniums, uranium, krypton, xenons, etc., the iodines, and, and more importantly, importantly, the curium, which is the biggest byproduct of radiative fuel rod. And you need lead shielding 20 times thicker, for instance, for the curium. So curium-244, you need lead shielding 20 times thicker than you do for plutonium. Japan Prime Minister, now there's tons of headlines over the entire year of 2011 like this. Japan Prime Minister study setting up an alternate capital away from Tokyo because Tokyo is a nuclear wasteland. I already showed you that. 
What's the date on these things? This one's May the 1st. That one's November the 3rd. May the 1st, November the 3rd. Japan unveils plan to develop a massive government backup city 300 miles west of Tokyo. Room for 200,000 slaves. Japan's government industrial complex to create a small Japan in southern India. It became clear radiation came further south than we thought, all the way to Tokyo. Local Tokyo officials says, "Well, at a nursery school, with kids rolling in the dirt and tasting it." ABC Australia, only ABC Australia, and this scumbag down there, what a degenerate he turned into over the last couple of years. Fukushima uh, writers obtained. What's the date on that? February 17, 2012. Writers obtained a secret Tokyo evacuation scenario. Fukushima reactors fail as the spent fuel rods melt, mix with concrete, and fall into the buildings. Japan Times alarming government report discusses Tokyo exodus and collapse of spent fuel pool number four. I showed you endless pictures earlier of reactor four. It's gone. The whole building is gone. So they should have abandoned Tokyo, not Tokyo Exodus. You permanently should have abandoned half of Japan, minimum. And the other half you should abandon when you had the time. Absorbed radiation doses of iodine-132 was 10 times higher than the 131. Plus the iodine-132 is nine times more effective at irradiating the thyroids. And for every 131, there was 10 times more 132, but there was 30 times more 133, which has those same attributes, and 31 times more iodine-129, which would have a 15 million year half-life. And yeah, it doesn't pulse very far, but it's enough to destroy your chromosomes, your DNA, and your cells at the speed of light every second for 15 million years. Are you gonna live to see 15 million years down the road? No. Is that stuff? Yeah. Oh, it's a problem. It's, it's a problem. Radioactive black substance is found 230 kilometers from Fukushima plant. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. No, it's not, Dan. It's only 2.2 grams of tritium, damn it. What do you Photoshop all these bags for, Dan? Are you liar, you filthy bastard. You sick bastard. 230,000 Beckwells per square. These are catastrophic numbers. These are unprecedented. These are just unprecedented numbers. Six times the size of the limit set for the radiation control zones. Government session reveals 40,000 times normal radioactive xenon. One third. There is no normal, by the way. It's, it's got a short half-life, right? So there is no normal. 133 levels in Chiba. Unless normal dirt is normally released, actually, in it from the fuel pools. The fuel pools are all, f there's 400 nuclear power plants, 410 or whatever worldwide. That's just power plants. We're not talking about the government or research reactors or, or, or reactors that the government don't acknowledge. And every one of them got two fuel pools and every, all of them are hemorrhaging radiation because they're splitting atoms. And so when you put a reactor core in a fuel pool, Later on, you know, 18 months later, two years later, five years later, you're going to put another reactor core in there, and you're going to put another reactor core in there. Each of these cores are still producing the same atoms they do for the boil water for a million people, a million homes and businesses, rather. There's no containment anymore. So these things shouldn't even exist. So when you hear people saying, well, they don't know what to do with nuclear waste, they're refusing to acknowledge why nuclear waste is an issue. Because if they tell you the truth, you're going to beat the shit out of them when you see them, right? You're going to walk up and kick the shit out of them the minute you lay his eyes on them. Actual figure may be much higher. Well, let's, let's look at the Xenon 133 for a second. Uh, uh, Xenon 133. But there's all kinds of other Xenon 133. Right, the anthropogenic man-made Xeon, which is 133, that you got to worry about besides 133. But it, it never comes alone. It comes with all the other isotopes. 
all the different kryptons are going to be there, all the different uranium is going to be there, all the different plutonium is going to be there, all the different americium and neptunium and all the different cesiums. But by the biggest worry is the curium isotopes. I mean, you got to worry about every one of them. Don't get me wrong, but you better worry about the curium. That better... Uh, newly released NRC emails. There was actually uh, 4 million emails released. I used to link them on my other site, but they took down my site when I was out looking for spiders because that's pretty scary, right? Holy shit, he's out looking for spiders. Got to get rid of that guy. He's a problem. 240 kilometers from the meltdown, one of the three principal radionuclides identified. Well, see, what they do is they, they, they can find an isotope, then you can extrapolate mathematically many of the other ratios of isotopes. For instance, for every 137 produced, uh, cesium-137, there's going to be 100 strontium-90 produced after 1,000 days, and it's going to keep that ratio for tens of thousands of days. And like I say, for every iodine 131, there's 10 times more 132, 30 times more 133, 31 times more iodine 129. The 132, 133 are nine times more effective at ionizing and radiating thyroid glands than the 131, which is unbelievably effective, incredibly effective. But the problem is, you have it so much, you're going to saturate the thyroid gland. So there's huge issues now because you're producing radioactive hormones for starters. And if you're looking at the younger population or the smaller population, like insects and birds, then you're going to destroy the reproductive abilities. Or you're going to disproportionately change the birth outcome to more males and females, which means less species population, because if you have less females, then there's going to be less species, right? Including the humans. And then ultimately, as you mutate generationally, you're going to destroy the ability to reproduce at all. So with insects, generationally, you might see many generations in a year. But with humans, there's a long, right, there's a lot of latency between generations. Strontium-90, 245 kilometers from the meltdowns, 150 times the background. So they should have picked up 30 million one-ton bags in, in Yokohama City, right? High levels of strontium-90, 250 kilometers from the meltdown. Officials carefully examining where the isotope came from. You know where it came from. You picked up 30 million one-ton bags. You know, you know, you scumbag, where that came from. From the top of an apartment building in Yokohama, 250 kilometers away. 24,000 becquerels a kilogram of radioactive cesium in soil samples, 250 kilometers from Fukushima. So, when you see these studies, estimate the impact of Fukushima, southern Spain. Uh, the government had a problem in communicating information with the public. Problem! They got a problem. Like, the word honesty to them gives them, like, the cold shivers. They turn pale right away when you... T like, what? Well, you can't say that word around here. This is a typical. Preface to a special issue, Japan's National Mapping Project and large-scale environmental monitoring and mapping of Fukushima. They produced over 5,000, it was 5,500 or something, but over 5,000 speedy uh, models. And the speedy model is the radioactive fallout model, so as they got new data, they, they didn't release it to the public who, who paid for it, who gave them the authority to do it. No, they gave it to the American military, though. Why would you talk about potassium-40 and in a nuclear meltdown? Because the nuclear meltdowns produce, don't produce potassium-40. The only reason you're going to do that is you try to drive the truth deep underground, right? Marine dispersion assessments of cesium-1... Let me try to do this another way because... If not... It's so important. That's the, the problem with the story is it's so important. Marine dispersion, dispersal, dispersion assessments, 137 cesium release from Fukushima Daiichi accident. Like, you had 30,000 becquels a square meter in Nagano, 250 kilometers from the meltdown. 
So, like, because they, they, let's keep going. <laughs> I'll I'll get myself worked up here, and that that never turns out good. My throat is too weak to start screaming. Japan's energy, but it's doing really good. I'm almost screaming here for the last hour and forty five minutes. Maybe I should give it a little go. No, I better not. I'm just starting to feel good after three weeks. You shouldn't screw it up this quick. Japan's energy security predicament post Fukushima. Energy security, you're supposed to abandon half of Japan, you piece of art, you. The plus iodine 131 is nine times more effective at irradiating 132. We recovered that. Disappearing everyday materials, the displacement of medical resources following disaster in Fukushima. Preliminary comparison radioactive uh, isotope concentration sewage sludge. 6,000 becquels a kilogram. <laughs> Compared to Europe, or low compared to Europe after 1986, but those numbers I covered earlier, some of these numbers were um, quarter million becquels a kilogram, right? Strontium found in 2,200 locations in Fukushima. 2,200 locations. Studying the levels of Fukushima derived radioactivity in the sockeye salmon collected on the west coast. So if you're going to study cesium, which is what they're doing, 137, then you're completely ignoring all the gammas, the other gammas, the alphas, the neutrons, and the betas, and the x-rays by proxy. Ernie Gunnison, and I, I have so much contempt for him because he made the racks for the assemblies, for the fuel pools, he knew they were gone. And he's still out there today, fair winds, he's still out there today telling the same lies. His, and he should be retired and, and you know, should have a retirement home for people like Ernie Gunnarsson. So when you finally get him in there, you can waterboard him every day and get all the information out of him. That's a terrible thing to say, is it? You should waterboard a monster to get find out how many people he murdered that we don't know about? Yeah, that's a crime, all right. High radiation level, 270 kilometers from the meltdown. I, I despise Ernie and Maggie Gunnarsson for what they've been doing for 12 years. I, I despise them. I completely disrespect them. Nuclear action derived tritium 3H. Wow, 3H, really? Somebody actually said tritium 3H? Do they actually put that there anywhere? Just 3H. Ah, you'll figure it out. 3H, what is it? I don't know, 3H. They didn't want to use tritium in. Why didn't they use the word tritium there? Because that's what 3H is, right? Tritium 3H. That's man-made uh, tritium. There's natural tritium. <laughs> but uh, we destroy, like what Canada, Canada produces more tritium than all nuclear reactors on the planet combined. Canada releases each year. Uh, like the numbers, like 16 million from the New Brunswick plant. 16, I'm sorry. Uh, 16 million trillion atoms a year. This is this is like a large accident is what we're talking about each year. Can, Canada's can-do reactors are massive disease factories. Observation of Fukushima fallout in Great Britain. Of course it is. It's everywhere else too. 300 times more radiation released into the atmosphere from burning debris didn't claim by the government. So it was constantly going to Britain and everywhere else because they were also burning it in incinerators across the country and that's liberated and distributed right across the entire planet. Learning from the Fukushima nuclear power plant accident. Well, the only lesson to take away is nuclear gotta go. Nuclear gotta go. It, it has no right to be, exist, period. It's the wrong technology, it's not supposed to exist. It's a lethal to everything with replicating cells. Lessons from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power station. Uh huh. Effects of radio radio cesium fixation potential on 137 cesium retention volcanic soil profiles at Fukushima. Rapid migration from organic layers is caused by small fixations. 137 potential. Uh, so, like, let's look at it this way: the, scraping up the one, 
one point uh, one inch topsoil was pointless. And then discovery of non-spherical uh, radio cesium bearing particles not derived from Unit One. The Fukushima the plant in residence five years after the accident. So I'm not sure why that study is suggesting that Unit One was an issue. When, like I show you these pictures of reactor three and four earlier, they're completely gone. Unit one, you know, have you, you can't tell the difference between unit one, unit two, unit three, and unit four, the emissions. It's like, so if you find it far away, you can't say that came from reactor one, two, three, and four. So why are they framing that narrative that way? Unusual radioactive particles near the Fukushima Daiichi plant, unusual. 40 billion becquels a kilogram on the road size. 40 billion becquels a kilogram. Effective effects of radio cesium fixation potential in the cesium. We already covered that one. Overview of current knowledge concerning the health and environmental consequences of Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Disease Factory. Predicting the long term 137 cesium distribution in Fukushima from the Fukushima Daiichi Nuclear Power Plant accident. Like predicting. See, why are you predicting when you have a ridiculous amount of documentation? Hot particles 400 kilometers from the nuclear meltdown. That's that scumbag around the Gunnison again. Hot spot spreading government checks radiation up to 460 kilometers from the meltdown. 27,000 becquels per kilogram at a kindergarten in compost, for goodness sakes. And compost is usually made of stuff you were eating, right? And so the kindergarten, there was brutal radiation. 600 kilometers from Fukushima, high levels of cesium. Again, every time I heard the word cesium, I used to pull my hair out of my head. Now I haven't got much left, so I stopped doing that. You picked up 30 million one-ton bags, for goodness sakes. And the minimum was 100,000 becquels a kilogram. Modeling watershed scale, cesium transport. And notice, so cesium 137 has been weaponized against you and everybody else on this planet. 900 kilometers from Fukushima, cesium 137. Severe accident issues raised by the Fukushima accident improvements suggested. Radiation doses received by an adult Japanese population living outside Fukushima. Prefecture. The majority of these studies were based on external doses only. Professor now reveals a high level of radioactive material a thousand kilometers from Fukushima. But so then why are they claiming that nothing got out? Why are they claiming it's only 2.2 grams. Why are they pretending 12 years later that meltdowns they acknowledged for the last 12 years, now they're saying it didn't happen? Now they're saying everything is is pizzas and pies. Now they're saying everything is is harmless. There's nothing happened. Have a great day. Uh, God bless nuclear. And, and long may live the nuclear scumbag industry. That's, I'm just paraphrasing them, right? Well, because they, they know they're scumbags. Let's face it. It's not like they don't know they're scumbags. I mean, like when you can compel the media to pretend that they're in a building that don't exist, then you're a danger to humanity and the eight million species. You really are. You're a threat. And, and you're scumbags. You're, that's scumbaggery to do that. That's a degenerate thing to do have the world's media that's just a fraction of them okay <sighs> I was in to the doctor today in the city a rough day uh, but um, I'm in good spirits I gotta bring the truck in tomorrow we, we gotta finish the repairs we gotta get a um we already got it ordered in. I'm not sure what the price is, but it hopefully it's not horrifying. <laughs> it's 
it's a garage, Dana. Yeah, I know. Okay, I want to be able to sleep tonight, so I got to think the best. Um, so I got to do the tie rod end and the ball joint. They're ordered in, and then I got to do a front and wheel alignment too tomorrow. And then it's complete. Foot, foot, done. <laughs> what a horrible friggin' year, eh? What a tough, what a tough. I got the world's worst job, but I, I, I wouldn't trade this job for anything. But I, I do. I got one of the worst jobs imaginable. I have to make it work, right? I have to sacrifice everything all the time. And, and if people don't help me, then I'm in real trouble. But I, I, I'm not allowed to quit. I, it's a job you can't quit. And it's a job you wouldn't want to quit, right? You got to have someone out there that's 100% honest, 100%. And you know, all the research expeditions that we've done over the last uh, decade, for instance, we didn't win all the battles, did we? Or, you know, we f in fact, we failed a lot. We gave it our all every time, but we failed so many times. And we just got to pick up the pieces to, and, and, you know, I had the heart attacks in February, preceded by gallstones, which was... I thought I was dying with the gallstones. I'd never had gallstones before. I thought I was going to die for sure. And then I had three heart attacks, and he put seven stints in. And that's, got, that, that's left me with all kinds of complications. And I'm on medication for the rest of my life from that stuff, right? So there's a huge chunk of the money goes got to go out each month to medication. Now uh, i got to get back in there now. i got brutal surgery coming up. And so next week will be, I'll be gone for a while after next week. And I got a long recovery ahead of me. And, but I'm not allowed to give up. So I got to find a way to get back in front of the camera and harass the nuclear industry and try to awaken the population while I'm trying to recover. So my recovery will be focused on sitting in front, getting to the point where I can sit back in front of the camera and tell the story for an hour or two, and that'll, that'll be a big win each day when I can do that again, right? And so right now I'm gonna concentrate on trying to get really good information back, or information out, and um, just in case something bad happens. And just make sure I, I got that information out there so the world can fight on, right? I'll be back tomorrow night. We got another one for you tomorrow night. Tomorrow's Thursday, the last, the last show of the week. And, um, I got more than enough on my shoulder right now. I got more than enough on my plate. But there's nothing more important than Fukushima. Fukushima comes first. And, um, I'm, I'm super impressed by the peroxide. Everybody should buy a bunch of it. And just, just, Pour it in your hand, drench your face, and it'll it'll absorb right into your skin in about a minute. You'll feel like wiping it off because you got, you know, because all I'm doing is pouring it on my hand. I'm wiping it on all the big veins because it's gonna suck up. You can just feel like 10 seconds later, 15 seconds later, you can just like you took a big deep breath of fresh air all of a sudden. And uh, my throat was just stripped, and uh, as soon as I put that all over my throat, chest, within a minute, the, the hack is gone. Even cough syrup doesn't do that, right? You get some relief, but it's, it's not gonna... That's the actual relief. And last night, I fell asleep last night after um, I posted the video. I didn't wake up until 6.30 this morning. And I woke up, because normally I have two pillows, right? And I take one out when I'm ready to go to sleep. Two pillows underneath my head. I, I didn't wake up a single time all night. It's been a long time since I've done that. Uh, and I bet you that was the peroxide last night. Rejuvenated my body, right? And so today I'm feeling way different. Uh, and uh, I need that before I end up back in the hospital here. Get my body back in, in tip-top shape. <laughs> Got a long way to go. Anyway. See everybody tomorrow night. Have a great night. Have a great day tomorrow. Hugs for everybody and your friends, your loved ones, and your pets, and your species in your community and worldwide. 
we are here to go to war for you so you don't have to. Have a great day.